Hello YouTube. Hello everybody. How is everybody doing? Welcome to latest video. <laughs> this is it's this is I'm gonna say it now, this is a bad video. This is this is a troubling video. <laughs> this is I am in trouble with this video. So I had a lot of orcs when I was younger. Um forty K orcs were one of my first armies when I was a kid. I had thousands of points on them, uh, converted all sorts of models, I love the Blood Axe Commandos, uh, I, I, the Blood Axe Commandos were, I think they were my second ever blo um, Golden Demon entry as well, I converted a Blood Axe Commando unit, and uh, Games Workshop very kindly sent me the new Snickrot, boss Snickrot model, which is, I, th I believe he's the boss of the Red Skull Commandos, I think that's right. Uh, yeah, he's rather cool. <laughs> He's really cool. Hopefully you've watched the video where I kind of do a quick review and um, and show the repos. I hope you like the slightly lower uh, right arm on this. I thought the, the, the right arm on the actual kit, I thought it just looked a little bit high, looked like it was a chicken trying to fly. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a very, very easy kind of tweak to do. And uh, here's the model. So we're getting some paint on it. Now he's, what were the paints I use, I've got the paints here, so it's Crick's Bane Base um, and Vulcan Green. Now I had an idea, because when I was younger I painted my orcs with a very kind of a yellow, bright yellowy green skin, and I had an idea, not, not particularly grim dark, but I wanted to do like a little bit more of a grimy, dirty uh, orc skin style, and I had the idea to start with a Rhinox Hide base coat so it's basically just had I think it's been airbrushed uh, but you can very very easily just get a massive brush water down some Grinox hide and toss it all over the model as well but um, yeah this is the Crick's, Crick's Bane base from P3 it's a lovely paint actually it's a really nice kind of uh, almost uh, camo green um, very very kind of dark camo green uh, base colour which I was hoping was going to um, give a good base for this idea that I had in my head for how to paint these. Now this is the first orc I've painted uh, since I was about 21. <laughs> so, uh, so the idea to try and try and move away from how I painted them when I was a kid, um, I had the idea in my head, and as you'll see shortly, uh, it doesn't quite go to plan, but we do correct it. It does look. I, I'm really pleased with it towards the end. But um, yeah, we the. The paint is thinned down. It's probably it's probably 50/50 water, maybe a little bit more, maybe 60% water, 40% paint. Uh, as you can see, it's drying very slowly. It's a nice sheen on there as it's as it's um, settling, um, and I'm manipulating the manipulating the paint as it's um, sitting on the on the model. The um, brush, dry, brush direction. I'm always kind of trying to keep up to the top of uh, any highlights, but the the, the initial colour on this, the initial, uh, that P3 colour, um, I'm basically just trying to cover everything apart from the deepest recesses. Deepest recesses, I'm trying to keep this really cool Rhinox Hide brown uh, to add a little bit of kind of red warmth to the, the recesses and the underlying skin tone. Uh, and uh, it, does, it does pay off in the end. Um, but I do go a little bit of an elongated way around it. Now, the Games Workshop sculpt is really nice. The, the Games Workshop are doing some really nice sculpts at the moment, and it is making uh, painting, and uh, painting quickly as well. It's, it's, it's making all that kind of uh, really helpful and really, really easy to do. Uh, like there's the, there's a nice vein on the back of that hand there, which is really easy to kind of pick out. So the clarity of the details is great. Uh, but I'm using a um, <laughs> I'm using a Da Vinci. <laughs> sorry, excuse me. I'm using a Da Vinci size zero brush here. Uh, but it's uh, as you'll see, uh, and the eagle eyed among you, among you will have probably already noticed. Uh, it's it's missing half its bristles. Now this is a uh, a brush which I'm playing around with at the moment, and I, I cut half the bristles out. Um, and I quite like the. The length of the bristles. I, it's one of the reasons why I like the Da Vinci brushes, and you can get the link to uh, the Da Vinci's, which I use uh, down in the down in the description. Um, but I like the Da Vinci brushes because they've got a good length of the tip, 
and it allows you to uh, be really precise with where you're placing it. Uh, I just thought I would kind of push it a little bit further and so this is a size zero so it's a very long very long bristle for the size of the body uh, so that ratio is quite high uh, and it's really nice to kind of play around with and make these little straight marks um, and it's really really good actually for for doing muscles like this because you can um, highlight in straight lines following the line of the muscle following the um, following the striations of the muscle particularly on these mus kind of muscular figures and uh, of the orcs as well it's quite it's quite useful um, but so this is the Vulcan green so this is the second highlight again we're just going to uh, focus a little bit more now on uh, the upper areas and um, the the goggles on this model I, I wanted the goggles to be quite bright uh, so they're going to be bright chrome um, as if they're kind of regularly used and he, he actually the goggles are almost the thing that he really looks after in his kit um, but that means that the head is going to be quite bright and I wanted to keep the focus around that area by having some bright spots coming up towards his head as well to, towards his goggles so this the top of this um, shoulder and his ear uh, and like his jaw and things and just the top of the hand as well just want to keep those a little bit brighter so that we, we've got a, a little bit of a um, path that the eye can take around the model so the goggles and the shoulder drawing your eye in and then you can go and uh, investigate the rest of the model uh, later on so Vulcan green again so the the the, 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 the this next highlight um, this has got a little bit of ice yellow in it uh, this was probably a mistake but I do correct it later on now that the the issue is that I was trying to I thought the ice yellow because it has a bit of yellow in it I thought it wouldn't desaturate the green quite so much uh, but I think Vulcan green is slightly more desaturated than I thought it was uh, and mixing ice yellow into it does kind of pull the saturation and pull the green out a bit more than I was expecting. Uh, I do correct this in a little while. I put some glazes on of yellow, which uh, twofold has, has a couple of different benefits. Firstly, it gives you that kind of the punch back. Um, and I know I wanted to say I didn't want to paint it like I did when I was a kid, but it does, uh, I, I think... Um, as the more I was painting this, the more I was like, oh, it doesn't really look like an orc. I, I kind of miss that yellow punch on, on the highlights. So two, two, uh, two benefits of the glaze. It gives you that yellow punch back without, without affecting too much of the green midtones. But also, uh, whenever you glaze, you are kind of softening any highlight lines and the brush marks. So it's twofold, really. It's going to give me a little bit of the punch back, and also it's going to it's going to soften out the the brush marks and the highlight lines. Uh, we're still very much moving the brush towards the highlights, keeping the uh, the lines of the muscle in in thought, in mind. Um, the shoulder there in particular if you think of when you're highlighting a space marine shoulder pad uh, we, you highlight it with a circular final highlight so i'm con i'm trying to do the same thing on the uh, the shoulder as well trying to pull that highlight in towards the top and and keeping the highlight in a, in a circular shape um, but i'm just doing it in uh, in little dots here and, and lines following the striations of uh, that would be underlying in the muscle so this is again this is you can see it's just got a fraction more ice yellow in it now so it's really desaturated uh, i was actually quite disappointed <laughs> that it was desaturating it quite as much as i thought uh, it was quite as much as, as it is but um yeah we, we do sort it out now we're keeping you can always keep the rhinox hide in the shadows on this one um, I think you can see it's, it's it's kind of punching a little bit of interesting colour into the shadows there. But just keep working up, keep working smaller and smaller areas. Um, anything that's facing upwards, anything that's near the head, um, any surface which is near the head, you want to keep the, uh, the highlight nice and bright. Um, any smaller muscles like that, uh, kind of the second bicep sort of thing, you can you can kick that as well. 
One thing I wish I'd done actually, um, if you were watching the review video on this one, I put a little bit of putty to fill the gap on the right arm when we were reposing it. I wished I had then gone back and uh, done a bit on the left arm as well, because you can see you can see there's a little bit of a drawing line on the left arm, which I, I wish I got rid of. I've got a little bit of a cold today, so <laughs> I've got I've had hot drinks on all day, so I'm a bit sniffly. I've been doing lots of videos actually recently. I hope you've been enjoying them. So yeah, the the final highlight here. I'm trying to keep uh, any surface which is facing upwards, um, and just working across the transitions as well. This is again, this is I've, I've got two two lots of this paint on the wet palette. One that's slightly thinner, so that I can kind of glaze and add lines across the transitions to soften them down a little bit so this is quite a soft quite a nice transition uh, as it is at the moment and then what we're going to do as well is we're going to get some yellow on it anyway uh, but you can see how desaturated it's looking if you like this look then just keep do keep going in like this so keep that desaturated feel um, but um, yeah ultimately I was like well, I kind of missed the <laughs> kind of missed the yellow punch um, that uh, that I remember is how I used to paint the orcs. Obviously, my my orcs when I was younger were were very very yellow. I used the the old classic orc flesh back from back from the 90s and highlighted that up with like moot green, the equivalent of moot green. I think it was scorpion green back then. Anyway, it was very it was very bright, very yellow. So carry on that all over the uh, all over the body. There's not that much green skin showing uh, surprisingly actually for um and here's the flash kits here uh, for an orc there's not that much green skin showing i thought there might be a little bit more one thing i did wonder about doing with this as well is adding a little bit of war paint but ultimately i couldn't decide what color to make it whether to have it red war paint um, or blue war paint, so ultimately I didn't I didn't try any. I would have probably put some uh, like orc tooth tattoos on the uh, on the upper side. Now th this is the glaze. Now the glaze is very thin. It's probably four parts water to one part paint, and the brush is very damp as well. So you get uh, you, you fill the brush up with um, fill the brush up with the glaze. Uh, clean it off on the. I, I start cleaning it off on the wet palette, and then I uh, kind of clean it off on a um, a piece of paper. I don't use a kitchen towel because a kitchen towel tends to pull just a little bit too much moisture off the brush for me. Um, and then you will notice all the all the brush um, motions are going up towards the top of the highlight. You can do you can do it both ways. Um, I, ideally you want to go away from the highlight because you don't want too much of the yellow um, you don't want too much of the yellow sitting on the top of the highlight but this is such a thin glaze you can kind of get away with uh, you can get away with doing it either way and then here you can see we've got the glaze as well but I'm, I'm, I'm very particularly pulling it in lines just to try to add some some more uh, punch to some of the highlights and the texture and uh, I hope you agree with me when uh, when I say I think I prefer this to the slightly more desaturated look um, but notice as well that by doing this it's only really adding that little bit of yellow to the highlights so you've still got that kind of real green uh, not green it's obviously green uh, you've still got that real uh, the, the the camo um, green coming through from the from the original kind of mid tone and the base tone uh, the P3 Crix Bane um, that's that's kind of still managing to pull through and keep it a little bit muted uh, and it's just the highlight this is just kind of like the top highlight punch which is going this nice rich yellowy green. Uh, but yeah, just I, I, it's it's just a simple process now of just following through and carrying on all across the rest of the model uh, with that glaze. Um, I did correct this before I did the highlights on the left arm. Um, so all I did was mix a little bit of the yellow into the ice yellow highlight mix. 
and uh, then it avoids having to do the highlights and then glaze them back again so you can do it both ways uh, this is probably like if you're doing it for a competition or something it, it, that should be quite nice to highlight it up with the ice yellow mix and then glaze it with the yellow because it, then it's it, it does soften the transitions out really well but you can if you're just doing it for your army painting or uh, a quick display model or something like that then you can very very easily just kind of throw a little bit of the flash kits yellow into the ice yellow mix the ice yellow is really good because it does add just that little bit more lightness um, so I would still I would still use the ice yellow but just drop a uh, a tiny dot of flash kits yellow into the mix on your wet palette the stippling up at the top is just to try to keep the saturation up, up towards the top so I didn't want to drag any more transitions up there and it's also right up at the, right up at the top there is quite difficult to get a a brush path which finishes up towards the top so obviously where you're taking the brush off the model is where it's going to leave the highest percentage the highest kind of saturation of of paint and uh, trying to get a uh, a brush path that finishes up towards the top there and does leave that pool is quite tricky so the stippling uh, sometimes helps just apply a little bit more saturation um, and heavy glaze if you like to that area but, uh, scrubbing in the glaze on the hand as well same thing just over the highlight just glaze over the highlight that you've already put down and then you can probably mix in a little bit of uh, you could I think you can actually go a, a step high with the highlights as well so you could you could mix in a touch more ice yellow to so this mix that's got the flash gets yellow in and just just push the highlights just a fraction further but that's the model that's the model all highlighted across the whole of the green and here we have XV88 is one of my <laughs> it's one of my favorite browns if you look at if you look at some of my kind of brown cloth um, models it, the vast majority of them are uh, are XV88 now this is XV88 is a lovely colour to use, uh, particularly over Rhinox Hide as well, because Rhinox Hide supplies uh, a kind of a w rich, warm base tone to work on. Um, and what we're doing, it's a very thin, it's very thin down XV88, and there's not much on my brush. So I'm I'm building up lots of different, uh, old lots of layers of scribbles along the crease lines on the trousers and each scribble is getting smaller and smaller towards the top of the highlight so you can scribble all the way across from the shadow area and then pull and drag like this and pull it up to the highlight area um, and that where you start the brush and then where you finish the brush you'll have like a an XV88 or Rhinox Hide to XV88 transition which is quite nice so you can do all of this pretty much with just one paint so you can throw run upside down first and then xv88 up towards the top and just keep it thin xv88 deals uh, it it handles really well um as a as a thin down paint um particularly for building up layers and uh one thing the only thing you really need to do is the final highlight don't uh, use a uh, a slightly less thin down version of XV88 so you can build up build up the layers here and you can build up some really cool texture and then the final kind of nice crisp highlight is just XV88 that's about 40% water um, just so you get a little bit more of a hard mark a bit more of an opaque mark so at the moment all we all we're doing is working on translucent layers um, and uh, the the, the direction of travel of the of the brush allows you to create this texture um, and then just very very carefully hit a highlight like that there we go so there's one highlight and the the the, the, the really cool fun thing with all this is that the final highlight kind of pulls everything together so it doesn't really matter how messy all the kind of the texture transitions that you've been working on are if you drop in that nice crisp final highlight um, which is one of the things that I, I would urge everybody to try to get 
Um, every time you're doing that final highlight, do your absolute best to be very particular. Just slow the brush movements down, just 10, 20 percent, uh, and really work on getting that crisp final highlight. Because a, a, a crisp highlight on that final mark hides so much because it it um, it pulls everything together and it gives everything a border. It kind of it gives a, a, a finishing mark uh, which finishes and completes that section and completes that highlight if you like so when you're working on things like this um, you can be qu quite messy and quite quite um, quite free and loose when you're doing um, like volumetric highlights like we're doing on this uh, on the on the trousers there and particularly with trousers and cloth because cloth is such a such a soft highlighted surface in real life you can play around with the texture and then you can just pull it all together with just one crisp final highlight um, and the joy with this one as well is we're doing it all with one paint because you get such a such a range of transitions uh, with just this one paint but again we're just uh, we're just looking for that nice crisp final highlight to pull everything together uh, trick the brain into thinking that uh, you've done the whole thing neatly by uh, by doing just one highlight neat at the end actually a really really um, really simple trick uh, really simple tip as well as you're trying to improve your painting uh, just slow that brush down just a little bit uh, when you're doing the final the final marks get the final marks exactly where you want them and it'll really help the the overall look and neatness of the model um, and it'll have a really cool impact as well And this is a very old brush as well. I've been using this kind of cut down brush for about two months now, um, and it's been it's been performing really well. But you'll notice there's a couple of hairs which are kind of straggling a little bit, but it's still uh, it's still managing to perform and still managing to make the marks which I want, which is great. Once I've um, once I put those final highlights on as well, you'll notice that I'm kind of glazing over um, glazing over a lot of the transitions as well up to those final highlights. So you can soften those that final highlight mark down um, even even after you've put it on as well with the with the final final marks. Now this is Rhinox Hide again, and all we, I'm going back in and I'm adding a bit more contrast to some of the shadow areas, and also putting in a couple of uh, striations. So um, I can't remember what this what the muscle is called. Um, rotator cuff. So it's the rotator cuff. The rotator cuff has three three muscles which come across down the top of the uh, the shoulder, uh, and it's a really nice really nice muscle line to add in uh, for shoulders like this because it adds a little bit of detail a little bit of interest to that uh, to that area as well rather than just having a large a large highlight surface um, so just adding a couple of those in again it's just it's just thinned down Rhinox Hide. Rhinox Hide glazes very very well over this this color over the over green um, so uh, yeah, if, if you haven't gone too too bright with the highlights, um, Rhinox Hide will always it will always glaze over quite well. So this is quite thin down. Um, you can you can thin Rhinox Hide quite a bit more than you think. So yeah, thin it thin it as thin it a little bit more, and you can get some really nice gradual and soft marks with it uh, when you're doing these kind of uh, soft lines. It's a nice paint. Rhinox Hide is great. I do, I do have to mix a little bit of black into it uh, when I'm doing um, uh, non-metallic though. Uh, and the same on this shoulder as well, we're just adding some striations. So the, where the striations are, they're not following anything on the model, they're following striations that I've that, that were already already there in terms of brush marks. So the, um, the lines aren't on the sculpt, these lines that I'm putting on are literally just following 
um, maybe a slight uh, a slight brush mark that looks like a highlight, and then I'm just adding the shadow on the other side of it uh, with with the Rhinox hide on the brush. Um, so I'm adding those striations in. I'm adding the I'm adding the marks in on there. So those don't actually exist on the sculpt, um, and they were they were placed there because that was where a slightly more prominent highlight was or a slightly more prominent shadow line was where I didn't quite get a highlight across everything so that's also another reason why you can add these lines and and work in lines and work in uh, work in textures as you're painting as well because it gives you interesting things to play around with later on down the line uh, when you uh, then ultimately add in a few more details or textures it's really really good okay uh, metals decayed metal so this is uh, scale colored decayed metal it's a gorgeous gorgeous color and uh, what what I'm going to do this is you'll see this fast forward as well so I've thinned this down loads and uh, you'll notice it's such a good metallic it, it, it even covered very well when I thinned it down uh, on the, onto that foot there so I thinned it down even more so uh, the, the idea of this was I wanted um, a kind of a rusty rusty base tone to all the metal so I threw a, a thin down decayed metal over every single metal part on the model and what we'll do now is we'll just fast forward because it's this is the boring bit but this was the base tone that I wanted on, on everything and then certain areas we were going to uh, highlight and put some more um, metallic tones on uh, so for instance the um, the swords will end up being a much more much more metallic than maybe the buckles because the swords are going to be used more the buckles are just going to get covered up in dirt and rust and they're just not going to be looked after particularly by an orc whereas the the swords are going to be used regularly etc 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 now what i could have done actually once we'd finished the i might go back and do this actually once i'd finished painting the swords i should have added a little bit of blood splatter to them But uh, yeah, just thin down some de decayed metal. Scale colour is absolutely fantastic for metallic paints. The grind on the metallic flex that they have in their paints is one of the finest metallic grinds I've seen. Um, so they flow really well off the brush. Uh, always add a tiny little bit of water to them, regardless of uh, regardless of, of what you're trying to achieve on the paint job. So always add a tiny little bit. They take water really well. They take the thinning really well. Um, and uh, yeah I just slosh it all over it and then it, it uh, will sink into the recesses and give us a really nice rusty kind of tone to work with as we're painting up and the the main color of the paint uh, the main color metallic that we're going to use uh, is scale color um, black metal um, however before we get to that we're using my favorite uh, my favorite brown again which is XV88 XV88 is going all over the skulls which are hanging onto uh, on his belt um, and it, it's, it's almost it's almost a a dry brush um, brush stroke so I'm not trying to get this XV88 everywhere I'm just trying to hit the, the top surfaces of it leave some Rhinox hide in the in the recesses uh, and give me some room to highlight these. I love painting skulls. Skulls are brilliant. Rhinox hide, XV88, and screaming skull. That's all you need for skulls. Um, and it gives a, it gives a really nice kind of dirty uh, baked baked skull uh, look. So second second layer, uh, I'm 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 going back in and I'm just making sure that any surfaces uh, towards the top, uh, so particularly the top two skulls, I wanted to make sure that they were a little bit more covered with XV88 because uh, they're going to be uh, closer to the light source, so they're going to be a little bit brighter as well. I just made sure made sure those two and the one on the the left, uh, so on camera right as we look at it, I think it's an orc skull actually. Uh, where's where's Snicker? Right, there he is. I think it's an orc skull, so it's a little bit bigger. Yeah, it's an orc skull, so he's got a bit bit of a larger forehead on that, so it uh, needs a, a little bit more of a highlight on it. So um, this is scale color black metal. It's uh, thinned down a little bit, and it allows it to run off the brush really, really nicely. 
this is a Da Vinci Size 1 brush. Uh, I use Da Vinci Size 1 for 90% of my painting. Um, although that uh, that cut down size zero I've been using a lot recently, but then I've been painting tiny, tiny, tiny Lord of the Rings uh, models for Golden Demon. Uh, but yeah, this is a size one uh, Da Vinci. It's an older brush because I'm using it for metallics, so I try not to use brand new brushes for metallics. Uh, but this is <laughs> this is thin down black metal, and you can already see how a how well it's covering, and b how nice and fine that. Uh, metallic grind is in the paint because it's super smooth when it's going on and you can see the highlights really smoothly I'm just trying to catch any surfaces uh, pretty much any surface and then if there's a if there's a panel line or a, uh, a surface line or anything like that I'm trying to leave that uh, with a tiny little bit of black in it just for a bit of a um, bit of a shadow but this is going to be quite a bright goggle anyway. We're going to push this one up to uh, model air chrome, Vallejo model air chrome. Same thing with the, the really cool, I don't know why he's got these on, he must be from uh, the all the Imperial Guardsmen that he's killed, <laughs> but he's got loads and loads of dog tags. Anyway, they, these are really easy to paint because, the, the, like we were saying earlier, the clarity and the cleanliness of uh, Games Workshop sculpts at the moment really pushing the envelope with with plastics, uh, plastic moulding. It's really nice, really crisp details, so you can very quickly just drag your brush over the top um, and uh, get some good highlights on that. Now, because I've been painting those dog tags there's not a lot of metallic paint left on the brush so we can go in on the swords and start working on some very it's, it's almost a dull metallic if you paint it like this uh, get a, a dry metallic paintbrush um, and get a little bit more paint coming back in and wipe it off you see wipe it off my on my finger um, and you can get a kind of a dry metallic dull metallic look um, by doing this. Uh, again I'm, wor I'm working in lines that are following the lines of the blade so uh, the the grind of that of that blade trying to keep it trying to keep the brush working uh, with that with that grind so that it's it's following some again it's always just those like kind of little little uh, striation texture lines uh, work really well on the blade but you'll notice that at the top of the at the top of the cutting surface I've left uh, quite a heavy uh, shadow there uh, it's just for a bit of a uh, bit of contrast uh, makes the makes the blade kind of pop a little bit more and also it gives you somewhere to go when you're highlighting because uh, if you just paint the whole blade metallic then you've then got to highlight everything and even brighter metallic uh, and you, you kind of run out of highlights so if you uh, yeah, if you have a, a, a little bit more, don't don't uh, don't completely fill your brush up with metallic paint uh, and uh, leave those leave those shadow areas so that you've got uh, a bit more contrast on your on your blades going forwards. Same with the the, the feet here. I'm leaving that that uh, surface up towards the top uh, a little bit a little bit darker, so it's got some of the decayed metal look in there, and it's just just add to get a bit more contrast again. So you've got to be very, very, you've got to be very careful with Model Air Chrome. Model Air Chrome is a gorgeous colour, but it's very, very bright. It's really bright. Now I wanted the goggles to be quite a bright metallic anyway. So I was trying to make all the facets which are facing forwards here, making all those Model Air Chrome so it was quite bright and striking. Uh, anything that was facing upwards uh, leave a tiny bit of a recess of of black metal, uh, but ultimately you want that that highlight line running along the uh, the top edge of uh, of all these little goggle lens parts. So that top edge there, that's going to be a highlight. And the same all the way down there. Just imagining, because I, I always do lighting from 
um, camera right. It's I, th I think uh, when I'm painting, and uh, I think it's something that's come over from my photography when I was a uh, when I was taking photos, when I was doing portraits and photography. I'd always uh, set the cameras up so that the the lighting, the main light, the key light was coming in from camera right, and I think that's kind of just bled into my uh, mini painting as well so I do the same sort of lighting so anything any shadow is it tends to be on the the lower left hand side of models uh, as I'm painting them now the the teeth on this actually the teeth on the little goggles they're very very they're very small and they've got a, a, a tiny little rivet on them as well so be very careful when you're painting those um, because if you if you have a little bit too much chrome on your paintbrush and you touch that chrome onto the tooth it's going to flood and it's going to flood around that rivet and you're going to lose the contrast so the rivet is just going to kind of disappear uh, so be very careful when you're when you're painting those teeth uh, keep the keep the model air chrome away from the rivets uh, keep it towards the top side uh, or well a top side and the right side if you if you're doing uh, top right highlights uh, top right light source light like, like I'm doing here uh, so keep it keep them keep it away from the rivets don't want to touch the rivets and also the the nose piece on here actually was was quite challenging because I, I was I was struggling with the contrast um, I wanted to make the uh, the nose piece a little bit darker uh, and I couldn't quite get any black paint in there it's it's a very d it's a very deep recess and that sounds like you should be able to get uh, it should be, sounds like you should be able to get it quite quite dark and contrasty straight away but um, yeah it doesn't seem to paint, take paint very well on the inside so um, yeah hmm. and then the same with uh, the model air chrome on the um, on the dog tags as well so this is I think this is Rhinox Hide uh, so very very thin down Rhinox Hide and uh, I, I wanted to add these because I imagine these were these have been left on his arm for a long time so I wanted to get a little bit of Rhinox Hide uh, it might even be more from brown for a little bit more of a richer richer kind of rusty rusty, rusty colour uh, and I wanted to have the uh, the illusion that these have been on his hand for quite a while uh, got lots of dirt on there got got very wet uh, rusted a little bit um, and as you can see this is is, is quite thin down we're using a small brush so you can be a little bit aggressive with with where you want to put it he's falling off the tacky the tack as well now as well and when we're adding it to the blade notice we're adding it to the center we're not touching the highlights not going anywhere near the highlights with this um, we're adding it into the uh, into the shadow area of the blade uh, so that we've got a bit so that we've got a bit of color uh, in that uh, in that darker area and as when you get up to when you get into the uh, the kind of the recesses and um, where two panels are uh, joining you can be quite aggressive with the with the rhinox hide or, or more fan brown or um, scrag browns another good one scrag browns a great kind of rust color uh, so you can be quite aggressive with that and kind of get that in um kind of almost flood it into little areas now this is my favorite white paint that is uh, schminker titanium white uh, it's an artist acrylic you can get it from amazon and you get loads of it now one thing i want i, I do want to do um i uh, i i nudge rich gray to get to, to and try this paint um a, a couple of weeks ago and he got it and he likes it but uh, he's put it in a tub he's put it in a pot so uh, i and i hadn't even thought about doing that so what i'm going to do at some point i'm going to squeeze it into uh, one of my pots put a little bit of water in there put some thinner uh, and a ball bearing and uh, mix up some sminker into a pot so I don't have to keep squeezing it onto a wet palette and, and thinning it out myself so um, yeah <laughs> always always learning um, well particularly from from the some of the best painters around so the goggle lenses basically all we uh, I'm not going to do anything complicated on the goggle lenses I could do I could do um, like the tr traditional lens um, fade where you highlight 
highlight the uh, the bottom side and then put the dot on the top side so you highlight underneath it because that's where the um, when the when a when the light passes through a lens then you get a highlight towards the bottom side of the lens and then you get the glare the little the little specular highlight on the top side uh, I'm not doing that on these I'm trying to make these glow so all I'm doing is I'm running running this spinker uh, I, I did um, a thin coat all the way around so that you get um, somewhere for the glow to go and then right in the center here I'm just putting a white bright white dot so we're going to be very very lazy with the lenses uh, and we're going to use some contrast paint and the white dot and the recess running around it will give us a little bit of a transition and a little bit of a glow um, and then we can add add a, add a dot into the center of the red one because uh, the, the top the top lens there is going to be the large red one so we can add a little bit of a yellow dot onto that so these are the three contrast paints we're going to use uh, talisar blue warp lightning and i think it's bar red is the is the red one that i use um, it's just contrast paints which i've got there's, there's nothing there's nothing trick to uh, which ones i pick so i add i add a little bit of each to both uh, add a little bit of each to my wet palette get a big uh, almost like a big chunk of uh, paint on uh, on my paintbrush and just blob it on uh, there's a blue one done <laughs> it's dead easy uh, and it looks okay is it's, it's a lazy it's for the for the amount of effort it takes for the time it takes um, it looks fine um, you can you can take it further like I say you can highlight underneath uh, in a in the same way as you would highlight a lens, so you would get a uh, a blue, and then a slightly lighter blue, and a slightly lighter blue, and kind of highlight underneath, and then put that white dot on the top, on the opposite top side. But um, ultimately, this was for uh, particularly for an orc and for uh, like a um, just above kind of tabletop standard sort of paint job. Uh, this is this is ultimately absolutely fine. I don't think I'd go any further. Just running the contrast paint around the recess because then you get a nice rich recess glow. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, now I do go back and I add a little bit of an, uh, of an orange dot in the center of this um, as you'll see in a second when we show the finished model. But we do the same with the blue, the green. Uh, I couldn't quite decide which way around some of these were going to go. I didn't... Uh, <laughs> I don't know whether I like the blue lens. I quite like the green lens. I quite like the red lens. The red lens, I, I definitely wanted the red lens because orcs have red eyes. So I definitely wanted one red lens. Um, I think if I'd done it again, I'd probably drop the green lens and just do red and blue lenses and kind of alternate them um, or um, yeah, just, just kind of change it up a little bit. I don't think the green's that bad, maybe. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> One thing that was actually quite fun on this, um, I didn't actually know, I think I saw it on Twitter, how somebody was saying that the the new Snickerop model um, was still painted with a compass in one of the handles on the swords. I didn't realise that Snickerot had a compass in one of his sword handles, so I did. Uh, I did go ahead and paint paint a little compass in the in the hilt on one of the swords, which was uh, which was quite good fun. Uh, but uh, yeah, you learn something new every day on Twitter. I didn't know that. Uh, now, so this is a white highlight for that uh, I do change that later on and, and put a yellow highlight on the red I, th I think the, uh, the the whiter pinky highlight I think it didn't quite again it's it's my it's my uh, preference to uh, highlight with saturation rather than highlight with desaturation so uh, it's just in the same way that the the yellower orc skin I prefer the yellower orc skin on this um, than the kind of pale desaturated orc skin so that's exa exactly the same so it's a very long way of saying I prefer a yellow highlight on the on the red anyway um, but uh, 
Yeah, there we go. And we've got the green one and the blue one as well. Just little white dots on those. The, the white works a little bit better on the blue and the green, uh, not so much on the red. Red, red is a tricky highlight. Uh, it's a tricky colour to highlight anyway. And there we go, nice and simple. Got those out of the way, it's looking quite cool. And goggles. And here he is. It's all finished. With uh, the base and everything. Now the base is, uh, please don't look too closely at the base because uh, all this is very very bad uh, cork uh, and it looks very obviously cork as well I didn't do a very good job at painting uh, the rest of this uh, yes the back of the model is uh, completely painted everything here is perfectly painted it's all golden demon level painting on the back side of uh, the orc um, it wasn't because I had to paint it quickly for Warhammer community or anything <laughs> um, the the bits uh, that I've that I uh, have painted since uh, that haven't that I didn't record is all very very similar. Uh, so I did put one final highlight down here. So that is a little bit of excuse me, a little bit of snake bite, uh, a little bit of uh, screaming skull uh, added to the XV88. So it's just that little highlight there, and then some dots down there, uh, just for a bit of texture on the uh, front side of that. Uh, and then all of this uh, backpack is painted in exactly the same way. So that was uh, Rhinox hide, and then some uh, XV88, and then just these little little uh, highlight dots there with uh, Screaming Skull. Um, and then the all the uh, metallics here, exactly the same way as we did the swords. And you can see you can see how much kind of contrast and detail you get on the swords just from doing that it's very very simple um, quite quite uh, dry um, metallic pulling uh, down there uh, we've got a red bit down here uh, the skulls again it's just xv88 with a little bit of uh, screaming skull for the highlights same with the uh, the, the cords which are holding it on um, and the only other thing is where is have I got the... I think I've put it away. Uh, there we go. So the... I added a little bit of pigment wash. Now this is from Rival Crafts. I had a bit of pigment wash around all the feet just to kind of grubby it all up. And you can see it on the, on the base of the skulls as well. Uh, and on the base of the, uh, the knives and things. It just adds a little bit of context and a bit of more grime to some of the areas this is incredibly simple this is really really easy uh, this was uh, it was it was primed black uh, this is um, neutral gray right over the top so it's a neutral gray right over the top and then down at the bottom I think it was uh, white gray so I added neutral gray I wet blended the whole thing so it's neutral gray at the top uh, and then I got white gray down at the bottom and went and uh, just kind of mixed it in towards the top and then once that was done I threw apothecary white contrast paint all over it just to kind of pull it all together um, but that was positioned because I dropped this arm down a little bit uh, once once this was kind of all in place and positioned I thought this little kind of curve on the wisp sat around the sword really really nicely as if he was bringing the sword up and in and moving that smoke out of the way. I thought it fit really, really nicely. Now, things I'm going to have to do on the model um, now, so to, to improve it, I've got to improve this, these rocks. They look absolutely terrible. Uh, just they, they just look like cork. <laughs> That's one of my one of my pet hates. I don't mind using cork to kind of lift the model up and, and give it some height, uh, but I've got you've got to do something with the with the with the surface of the cork so that it doesn't just look like cork stuck on a base. Um, these are again these are from Rival Crafts. These are little tufts, uh, little moss tufts, and uh, you can see here that we've got that tiny little white uh, yellow highlight on the uh, on the big red lens there uh, and add a little bit of blue there just for a blood axe commando 
and um, yeah there we go I really like it I really really like him now thanks to Games Workshop for sending me the uh, the boarding patrol I'm annoyingly tempted to pick up some burner boys and some Gretchen because uh, I've worked out a boarding patrol I don't really want the flash kits um, but the the orc boarding patrol of um, some commandos some burner boys lots of bomb squigs and some Gretchen uh, is is quite enticing, particularly with this kind of style of orc skin. I think it would look really really cool. I do. I really 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 do want to add some some tattoos on here, but I don't know what colour. Do I add them blue or do I make them red, or do I? Do, I don't think black is going to work because we've got the the rhinox hide shadow in here is quite dark already. So if I add black, I don't think it's going to stand out and look like a tattoo. I think it's just going to look like a smudge. So I'm leaning towards red um, because red ones go faster, uh, orcs aren't particularly sneaky, <laughs> so all those sorts of things. And uh, there is the the little compass as well, which I spoke about. We'll zoom in and see if we can get a good good view on that. It was very very simple. Uh, it's a white line in that direction. It's a white line in that direction. It's a blob of yellow at the top, and then it's just a little dot of uh, Little dot of white on uh, on each kind of north northeast southeast uh, southwest and northwest and on those little marks down there. So yeah, there we go. There is Snickerot. He's awesome. I really really like him. Really like him. Anything else that you see on here is is just variations on the same colours. So uh, this down here is XV88 with a little bit of screaming skull. Um, the only bits which aren't kind of XV88 or Screaming School are the red bits, uh, and that's just my fist on red. And um, uh, Evilson's Scarlet. That again is just my fist on red straight away. I think it's got a um, a, a glaze of um, Agarox Dunes or something thrown over the top. Again, uh, XV88 with some Screaming School because it's bony. But uh, yeah, there we go. I hope you like him. Snickrot is awesome. And uh, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what colour you think I should make the, the tattoos on my uh, boarding party. And if you think I should even do a boarding party, please say no so I don't have to uh, try and paint some more orcs. He does look cool though, doesn't he? He does look cool. Right. Thanks very much, everybody. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Chris Frossin. Please try and find me on Twitch whenever I am live. It's usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, or Saturday if I've got something cool to talk about on release day. And that's at Chris Frossin as well. And obviously I have a Patreon, uh, which is at Chris Frossin. So thank you very much, everybody. And I will see you later. Mr. Snickrot, thanks you for your view. <laughs> He's cool. Catch you later, guys. Cheers, bye.